Don't be nervous, Kate. Kate's give. Wait, show the money. Kate's giving out money <laughs> during this live call that I'm doing now. I'm gonna be diagramming out your first hundred grand, or for those of you already doing hundred thousand a year, your first one million dollar business. What does it look like? What components do you have? Kate's gonna be listening in uh, for some trivia questions. This is fake money, but I'm actually gonna give you real money. <laughs> Sometimes people go, dude, I can see it's fake money. I'm like, yeah, because I ain't about to be walking around with stacks, get robbed, but I will send you PayPal, you real money, if you win. Should we do one now to start? Yeah. Okay, what actress does Kate get the most that she looks like? Who's her doppelganger? Let me see some of these comments. Let's see what people, this has nothing to do with business, but we are gonna talk business in a second. Somebody said, now Kate is back. That Megan Fox, you get Megan Fox? Mm. She doesn't really look, I met Megan Fox once. I was at Family Guy house party, Seth MacFarlane's house party, and he had like urinals outside because there wasn't enough. And I'm standing in the urinal line and in front of me is Megan Fox. And I remember thinking, only in Hollywood <laughs> am I at a urinal with Megan Fox. She's very pretty. Uh, let me see the Instagram one. Okay, 100 bucks, Kardashian, Myla Kunt, Lily Collins, Kendall Jenner. I don't think you look, wait, I don't I've like this. That Switch sides. Times. Amanda <laughs> Cherney. Amanda Cerny, I wish. Cerny, sorry, whoops. Kate Middleton, Gal Gadot, Kendall Jenner, Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you look so much like Whoopi Goldberg. No, lower the cameras a teeny bit, the, the Instagram one, it's too high. Camila Mendez, I don't see it. Whoopi Goldberg has dreadlocks. I feel like Whoopi, you look nothing like Whoopi Goldberg. Let's see. Oh, I need YouTube. That's the one we're missing. Nina Dobrev. Man, you guys are not good guessers. There we go. Oh, sorry, Take a sorry. picture of that. Afraz Budwani, Margot Robbie. A-F-R-A-Z-B-D-H-D, oh, Afraz Badwani, right there. Afraz, Margot Robbie, she looks like, I mean, that's what, that's what you, that's what she gets the most when she had blonde hair. You want to do YouTube? Okay. Well, Taylor Swift, what is wrong with people? How do I lift this up? Okay, let's talk about <laughs> medicated Marley. Who is that? Somebody says, what the hell? She doesn't look like her. Can you <laughs> raise this up a little bit, Rick? Sandra Bullock. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Rowland. Beyonce. Lana Del Rey. Oh, you got a teeny bit of the Lana Del Rey look, I think. What do you think? Did you ever get Lana? Lana? I don't know. Maybe her nose, because she has like a pointy nose. She has a pointy nose. She does. Okay. <laughs> Shh, no fair, she's brunette now. Demi Lovato, Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, okay, you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, they didn't win the money. <laughs> Abraham won. Camila Mendez off Riverdale. I'm just trying to remember. Okay, I'm going to look that up. Camila Mendez. Do you know who that is? I have no idea. Let me look. Camila. Nah. This girl? What? What pair of eyeballs is missing from some of the people on here? Justin Bieber. <laughs> you don't look anything like... Camila Mendez. No, we were gonna say, uh, yeah, when you had blonde hair, that movie Wolf of Wall Street, I swear made extra money just because of Margot Robbie. Every dude I knew was like in love with Margot well, you Robbie. Could look her up with brown hair. Is she brunette sometimes? Yeah. Margot Robbie, brunette. Yeah, look at that. See, you, she's got, look at that, Rick. That's more like her. Right. 
<laughs> Look at that. Frank, come on, man. Thank you. People just try. She doesn't look like Kendall Jenner. Gal Gadot, you don't look like either. Kylie That's Jenner. Wonder Woman. I've met Kylie Jenner. She doesn't look. The sister from Fast and Furious, Selena Go. All right. Changing <laughs> subjects. Thank you for being on here. She's going to come back later and give away some more money. We got $100 winner. It is interesting to see all the different people. What's her IG? Uh, it's, I think it's Gal Gadot. Oh, you mean Kate's? Kate's is at T-A-I-L-O-P-E-Z. Go follow right there, and that's Kate's. People are always like, why don't you tag? I'm like, so you can harass them? <laughs> that's like, hey, tag, tag Kate. Yeah, so she could get harassed. I think she'd like to pass on the harassment. I feel like humans aren't big on harassment. At no times I've been like, you know what's missing in my life, Rick? What's Need that? some more harassment. Harassment's fun. I think about that every day. <laughs> you think about that every day? Are you the one doing the harassing? Mm, no comment. No comment? Where is my, what happened to Facebook Live here? Oh, here. I can see myself. <sighs> okay. Jamie Presley. Ty, I'm an entrepreneur in NYC. How can I buy you lunch, dinner? I want to introduce you to my millions of followers. We will have to connect one of these days. Ty, you're a beast. I need you as a mentor to help my family from being evicted. So let's get to this 100 grand. The dot, let's diagram out what a 100 grand business looks like. So I'm going to give you a series of rules here because a lot of you follow me. You're trying to make more money you hate your job, or you like your job, but it's not scaling, it's not giving you the income you need. So, somebody said they've missed Kate. Brian Houston has missed you, Kate. Where'd she go? Oh, you have a fan in Brian Houston. First thing you gotta do to build, to scale your income, is get good at reverse engineering stuff. So I was, today, I have an inner circle group where I take a handful of people and I take usually four to ten people a year and um, personally mentor them. These are people who usually are already doing a million to ten million dollars a year and they want to grow. So I was on a phone with a guy, a potential person, and I said he was trying to get, he did 1.6 million in the last seven months. He's been, all my programs, he's been trained, he launched an, uh, a a product that's like a fitness, it's for fitness, uh, for personal trainers. It's kind of like, he wants to be like the next Zumba. Anyway, he was going, what's it take to make 10 million? I said, well, you got to break it down. Never have annual goals. So all of you trying to make a certain amount per year, forget that. You need daily goals. That's how you make money. So for example, the way I think about life is you have a war that you're trying to win. That equals the year. And that's made up of 365 battles. Okay? So the war, let's say you want to make $100,000 this year, or you want to make $1 million this year. Okay? That's the war goal, to win. But I always divide it by 365. Or you could just do 300 if you're going to take a vacation. So to make a million bucks, you got to do around 30 grand a day. To make... 100 grand, you're going to have to make around $3,000 a day, right? Uh, sorry, yeah. Am I doing that right? Yeah. No, not 3,000. 3,000 by 365. No. You have to make, actually, interesting thing. If you make money 24-7, you can actually divide this by 24 hours in a day. Watch this. This gets crazy low. How much money an hour do you need to make to make 100 grand with a business? Watch this. You take, you can do it with me. 100,000 divided by 365 days divided by 24 hours. You need to make $11 an hour with your business. That's crazy low. To make a uh, million dollars, you just need to make 110 bucks an hour. So $11 an hour, that's not so bad. Who here thinks they can figure out how to make 11 bucks an hour 24-7? 
Ty, I bought your program a year ago, but haven't started it. Is it too late for me to start? Nope, never too late. Better late than never. Daily income goal, dig, somebody called it. All right, I like that. But just so you know, that's the first step. Break it down. You can break it out into 365 battles or you can further break it down. You need to make $11 an hour if you want to make 100 grand with a business. So each business that you have needs to make you 11 bucks an hour minimum if you want to build $100,000 $100, a year. The key is, of course, to make it scalable to the point where you're doing that day in, day out, right? That's where people get a little bit lost. How can I accomplish that? All right, we're getting the, I'm diagramming it out. Give me a second here. Number one, reverse engineer the business into three, the goal into 365 battles. Number two, in order to make it $11 an hour, you need a 24 seven business. Whenever I go to like a, a restaurant or a McDonald's and I see that they're closed at one in the morning, but people want to eat, I'm going, why would you ever want a restaurant? You got to pay rent for 24 seven usage of it. Why would you close a restaurant? I think it's stupid. That's why like gyms, you know, 24 hour, these gyms that are open. What's the one that's open? The, the chain, 24, 24 hour fitness. To me, that's just, I mean, I don't know if it's the most profitable gym, but that's how I would do it. Because bills come in 24 seven. You're getting billed by your cell phone company for 24 hours of use for times 30 days. Your rent, you can live in that house 24 hours or your mortgage. So I think, ooh, that was fun. Uh oh, hey Heidi, can you bring a towel? I got sparkling water. Now I'm gonna find out if there's really ingredients in this, does it stain? People say LaCroix has artificial ingredients. Just grab one from the bathroom. Okay, just go grab a big towel. Then in one swoop, you can grab it all. Ah, oh, the delays that come with live calls. Okay, so 24 seven business. That means certain businesses ain't gonna work well for this. Most businesses aren't. If you have a restaurant, open the damn thing 24 seven, because then you only gotta make $11 an hour profit to net a hundred grand. Don't have a business that you can only do eight or 10 hours a day. You lose half of the day, okay? Um, <laughs> what the hell? Here, Kate, hold this for a second. Let me move this. Give me a second. We're having slight technical difficulties. Voila. Okay. The third thing, here we, we got to make sure you lift that up so it gets there. Do not stain. These floors are very expensive wood, actually. It's crazy. When they built this place, they imported wood from a French castle. So this wood's from the 1500s. Supposedly, it cost a million dollars this floor. So it's probably not good. I don't know if that's true, but that's what the realtor said. So basically you do not want to drop sparkling or any kind of water on it, but it is wood. So, um, <laughs> somebody said, I'm here in my expensive wood hallway. That's going to be my new commercial. Ty, you've really helped me put my life in the direction I needed to. Okay. So 20, pick correctly. Don't pick businesses that can't go 20. You need them to go all day. The only business I really know that does that is web-based businesses. That's why Jeff Bezos is the richest man in the world, one of many reasons. He, Amazon is processing thousands and thousands of, of orders per minute, 24 seven. That thing never ends, ever unless their site goes down. So you, you and I are not gonna probably be able to build our own uh, Amazon. I hope you figure it out, but 
the best thing you can do is get something web-based, server-based, meaning a computer is doing the work. So then step three of automating a hundred grand to a million dollar business. So it's not enough to just build a website because th right now there's about two billion websites in the world. They guess, nobody knows the exact number. So nobody's gonna see your new web business if you don't understand the most important thing in the world. And the most important thing in the world is how to drive traffic. Or how do you get people to visit, how do you get visitors to your website? All right, okay, let's do a $100 giveaway. What are the best ways to drive business to your website? Did Kate, she taking the towel? We might have to have Rick stand in for Kate. <laughs> hey, Kate. Yeah. All right, we're doing one more giveaway. Kate is highly probable for Rick. Somebody said advertise. What's the best place to get visits right now? Do you think it's Facebook? Is it Twitter? Is it YouTube? Is it Instagram? Is it email traffic? If you could only get traffic from one source, do you have the money? You got the money? You got the yayo? I got it. Here, go on the side. You like, she said this is her best site. Reddit, <laughs> Facebook ads. The problem with Facebook ads are getting saturated. I started doing Facebook ads in 2008 in the beta program. It was, you could make money back then. I remember I'm, my first Facebook ads I ever built in 2008, I went on a date with a girl. I came back and I had made $17,000 profit in like two hours. It was crazy because nobody else was bidding. So this is a trick question. I do not see the answer yet. Skywriting, messenger marketing. What was the question? Uh, what's the best place to get visitors to your website? What's the best marketing channel? A hot SEO blog, YouTube influencer program, partner with somebody, Pinterest. I think it mean Pinterest. <laughs> Google ads. This person keeps writing Pinterest. I like that they're, Nida, Nida, you're not going to win. You're misspelling Pinterest. Every three comments, he's writing Pinterest. <laughs> Pinterest, email subscription, word of mouth, Pandora ads. People don't even use Pandora anymore. Spotify, maybe. Highway ads. No. <laughs> That's probably the worst way to reach people. Um, the news, funneling. No, but a funnel needs visitors. IG fast viral content copy pointed to the right niche. Okay, it's a trick question. I don't know who to give this to because no one's even close. You guys are cold. Because I'm giving you the answer for the next 10 years. What's, for the next 10 years, where is the best place to get traffic? All right, I'm going to give it, even though you're not right, Isaac by, Isaac by nature, 100 bucks. Right here, you can take a picture. Good content. So that, that's partially true, but I'm going to tell you this. The best place, okay, thank you, Kate, for holding the $100 for me. The best place is the newest place. That's where you make the most money. You gotta be on the lookout. When I rolled out YouTube ads in like 2014, 2015, people were mad. They're like, who is this guy taking over YouTube? I'm like, me, because I was first, I wasn't the very first. There was some people before me, but nobody did it at the scale I did, and you can make the most money. The profit margins come from being the, on the newest platform. Now, not all new platforms all be good. Some new platforms suck. But if you can find a new one, I don't know, like TikTok is new. I don't know if they allow ads yet. Does TikTok allow ads? But I'll tell you this, when TikTok rolls out ads, I'm gonna be one of the first people on them. And also keep in mind that different channels roll out new things, so for example, Facebook rolled out Instagram ads. They didn't used to not be Instagram ads. So it was within Facebook's admin panel, advertising portal, right? So watch the existing platforms for new ways, like Instagram story ads is new. I'm doing a lot of IG story. So uh, yeah, TikTok is testing ads. So just keep that in mind. All of you people who are cynical, who are highly anxious, you're always going to miss out on the best place to advertise because you'll be late to the game. I always try to be early to the game. Be early to the game. 
and you'll make a lot of money. Be early to the marketing channel. Like right now, like you could still, and you could still do old stuff. You could do Google AdWords. That works. You can still do Twitter ads. They're, eh. I have the least success with Twitter ads, but some people, I have a friend that does really well Twitter, but I'm always watching what's the new, and some old school things like email marketing is still working, okay? It still works, but um, they used to work better 10 years ago. Eh, maybe not 10 years ago. Actually, we're kind of still in the, let me talk about that. So a diagram, okay, cool. A, a, a diagram here next of a successful business, 100 grand business or a million, you need an email list. By the way, we're gonna have to get Heidi to mop this. I can already feel that LaCroix is like sticky. Sheesh. So number four, let's talk about email marketing. Everybody should have their own mark email marketing list. So I don't care if you're getting two people a day to open your list, you need to get in the practice of emailing a group of your followers, not just social media. I've done the math. I make just as much money from email marketing as I make from social media marketing. It's crazy. Email makes me the same amount of money as social media. Not more, but not less. So you need to build a following. You can start, I started with 10 followers, uh, 10, sorry, 10 email subscribers to my email list. I remember it was like 2012. I had 10 people on my list. And then I got it to 100. And then I got it to 1,000. And then I got it to 10,000. And I went to 100,000. And then I went to a million. And now I'm way past a million. I, I'm not at 10 million yet, but I'm, I'm, I have a lot. And that's guaranteed money for me every single day. For sure, I could retire just off my email list. I'd make less money if I stopped doing everything, but I could for sure retire and make a million bucks a year from more just from my email list. That's crazy, right? Because email list, you can email your cost. If you're, I don't, you, there's different email providers you can use. You can use GetResponse, you can use ActiveCampaign, you can use ClickFunnels has one. You can use your own send grid kind of thing. I have my own, I built my own email system, but you know, guaranteed from an email list. Now, who pays for the email list? No, they don't pay. They don't pay on the email list. It's a free email list. Here's what I recommend each of you do. Make an email list, because people go, what do I write about? I'll tell you this, people are fascinated with your daily journey in life. So you build a following, use the three T's, the three T's. You teach, tailor, take control. So every day or at least three times a week, you email about your daily journey, whatever you're doing. If you like photography, talk about photography. If you like clothes, talk about clothes. If you like travel, talk about that. If you like business, talk about that. If you like you know, investing, talk about investing. Almost every single subject in the world that people are interested in, there's at least a million people interested in it. So you create your email list, you start talking about your daily journey, you teach what you're doing, then over time you can start doing the other T's and putting links to buy different things. They can be your products or other people's products. Huge way to make money. And it's insane they don't teach us in school. Like the school system, whoever designed it should be shot, I swear. It's just like, this here is very practical. It works, every business owner, there's over 30 million business owners in North America. And globally, there's, I'm not sure the number, but at least 100 million and nobody gets trained this stuff. And email is, um, <laughs> take a picture of this. Jake Wahan said, Ty, I I'm, I'm realize I'm addicted to your, we have this beef stick snack bar from my farms. That's awesome testimonial, it's right here. I'll put my finger there. Wait, it's, let me do it, it's a little blurry. And everybody, this is like from grass-fed organic cows, 
raised on our farm and uh, everybody's getting addicted to it. So anyway, get the strap, somebody said. <laughs> is 50 cent on here? Ty, what do you see as the new, next new marketing platform to look into? Well, I named one TikTok. That's one. Okay. Um, I love you, Ty. Where's your Lambos? Right there. I leave them right in the kitchen. You don't see it back there? <laughs> I love when people ask that question. Like, I keep them with me. I keep a little Lambo in my backpack. <laughs> and I just drive it around. I pretend. Elwin Ricketts. Am I familiar with Kartra? Yeah, that's another one. The email platform is not so important. There's lots of them. Kartra, FusionSoft. Um, what's the one? There used to be one that I used to use called... I can't even remember now. MailChimp is a huge one. So um, how do I feel about third-party data? Ty sent you a video of me opening the beef stick package. Awesome. Ty, I'm so happy you said my name. We love you from Algeria. I need to visit Algeria one of these days. Snapchat ads is one. I've done some Snapchat ads. I've had decent results. I, but for sure, Snapchat ads is another powerful platform. Okay. So you need to talk about your daily journal, a journey. It can be simple, it can be one sentence. Don't be afraid to send a daily email with one sentence. It can just be like, landed in New York. It's hot. It's fine, in fact, sometimes when you're doing your content, mar this is called content marketing. When you're doing your content marketing through your email, okay? When you're doing content marketing through your email, don't always write a long formal thing because then it looks too scripted. It looks too fake. You know, sometimes people go, oh, Ty, I see your videos and it's, it looks like you just rolled out of bed and you shot that video. I'm like, I probably did, but it looks less professional. Believe it or not, less professional stuff sells better. If you don't believe me, who do you think has more professional ads? Kylie Jenner with her makeup line or Revlon? Kylie Jenner's are just like her laying in bed, putting on her lip kits. And she's a billionaire at 21 years old or 20 years old. And she passed, I mean, she's growing faster than like Maybelline or whatever that's been around for 50 years. So content marketing needs to be relatable. Sometimes you should have a professional. Like sometimes I'll wear a suit. I go do public speaking, but I don't like to always do that. Okay. Uh, Ty, you gotta add an easy tear to your beef sticks. Yeah, we're changing the labels. We got some cool things to add to it. Austin Dixon said he disagrees is with at Mozzie. Like Ty said, you just now have to drive traffic to win and those know how to outspend their competition to acquire customers win regardless of the advertising channel. It's, yeah, somewhat, yeah. Um, da 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 da, Muhammad said, Ty, I'm raw. Thank you, all my money's being put to work. I can already taste passive income. You demand, keep paving the way. Cool. Less professional stuff sells better because the seller has to connect with the buyer if it's generic professional advertising, we aren't convinced. Yeah, professional ads used to work a lot better like 50 years ago when the world was very formal. Man, people aren't formal anymore. Social media has broken the barrier and now we're like, in each other's faces all the time. You're like seeing people doing live streaming when they just wake up. You're seeing people at their, obviously at their best, but you also see behind the scenes with social media, okay? Adam says, Ty, these are always interesting live streams. Well, thank you. Catherine said, this is literally so interesting. Well, good. Bring back bearded Ty. Should I grow my beard back, Kate? Like this? Kate says this is okay. I'm gonna go with her opinion over yours. What was the guy's name? Bob Smith. <laughs> Never get style advice from men. It's funny, men have very strong opinions on what's good, but in general, they have crappy advice, even when they're <laughs> believing it strongly. Okay, so content marketing, some of it should be formal and some should be informal. Please don't stick to one thing all the time. Bounce around your styles. 
throw people off a little bit. You never want to be predictable in life. The second you're predictable, people stop listening. It's just the nature of the game. It's boring. People need a little drama. They need a little unexpectedness. Ty, you should have a podcast. I do. I have like the number in the top five business podcast in the world right now. It's, uh, you can search it. It's very hard to find. It's under Ty Lopez. <laughs> it's called the Ty Lopez podcast. It's a very original idea. I was like, what should I call it? <laughs> business with Ty. Med- I'll just call it Ty Lopez. The Ty Lopez show. Okay, um, same thing goes for dating, Antar Dawes says. Be unpredictable, like be schizophrenic or bipolar. Is that the best thing for dating? <laughs> it's like, you're going to date some winners. Um, consistently, consistency says, I took your course on SMMA 2.0. I'm making money. Good. So vary your styles of content marketing. Let's talk about number seven, diagram of a, hundred, of a modern business. You want to go make a hundred or a million. I do have a Spotify podcast too. Very, very important thing. Number seven, video marketing. Now, for all of you who are shy, if you are shy and you are watching this, uh, put somebody else on video. I have a student of mine. He's in my programs. He's actually started teaching some of them, and he has a fitness. This is a different guy. He has a fitness program. He's making like three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand a month, and he's not in the video because he's kind of out of shape, believe it or not. So I feel like he went out and found some dude to be the face of the brand, but he knows how to run. He's like a boss in terms of like understanding the back office. So he sits there behind the scenes. He runs all the business side of things. He gets one of his friends who's like in super good shape. He makes that friend be in front of the camera. So even if you are super, super uh, shy, you still need to do video marketing. Okay? Now, somebody said I was just looking at video marketing, Fiverr spokesperson. By the way, you got six days left. Those of you wanting to get in my cash flow, my new cash flow system is the best thing I've ever done. It's got training like this, plus it has actual products that you can start selling online, partnering with me, and you can make money. Literally, you can have your first sale today. You make your first dollar online. My goal is to take a million people. So I'm going to put a little link there. Uh, I'll come back to video marketing in a second. So you just go to tylopez.com. If you go to my homepage, it's right there in the middle. It's called Partner Live. Just type that in, or you can click on the link right on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, or you can just go to tylopez.com. You have six days left. I did an extension. I want to show you. So it's a four-month training, but more important, I've never done an actual program where you can begin to generate money the same day because I'm going to give you access to three of my businesses multi-million dollar businesses that you can instantly start practicing everything I'm teaching you now, video marketing, content marketing. You don't even have to create your own product. I have, you know, 50 programmers, customer support people. I got all the software. I got the merchant processing. I have millions of dollars to spend on marketing. So it's like, you'll have my full support of my businesses. Okay. You can also use all this to build your own business, but you can partner with me too. So you got six days left. I just want to mention that. It's my new cash flow system. It's by far the best thing I've ever put out. I'm, it's crazy. Cash flow system. How to create multiple streams of cash flow. Three, ideally. Ty, what sells better? When you're funny or serious? Combination, I told you. Vary it up. Don't be predictable. Predictable doesn't sell. Predictable is boring. Never be predictable. Ty, I'm going to make some videos where I blab and talk about selling stuff. Try it. It might work. There's one of the cognitive biases of the human brain is that Charlie Munger, the billionaire, he basically calls it twaddle, meaning people need to hear you talk for a certain amount of time, no matter what you're saying, just to kind of, you penetrate this conscious mind into their subconscious. So yeah, you have to sometimes just babble. 
Just think about like TV shows. Some TV shows, not every episode's funny, but the more you watch them, the more in love with the overall show you become. Somebody said, just like the president. Yeah, all presidents babble. Most every president in the last 50 years has promised all kinds of stuff on the campaign trail that they never fulfilled. That's twaddle. So yeah, you got to learn how to speak. You have to learn how to communicate. Um, Ty, what happened to the other service? Yeah, there were some services in cash flow. I took them out because people weren't being as successful with them. So the cash flow program, I'm constantly updating it and I'm putting new stuff. I got a new thing I'm putting in there today. That's going to be a lot better. Okay. Ty, bring Kate back on. How important is the name you choose for your business? It's 10% of your success is the name. People spend sometimes too much time trying to figure out the name. A name is important, but it's only 10%. There's lots of businesses that have ugly names that make a lot of money. Microsoft is not a particularly amazing name and it's like $600 billion company. Apple's a kind of cool name. Amazon's kind of cool. Microsoft's not cool. Berkshire Hathaway is a 500 or four or 500 billion dollar company. That's not a good name. It was a rug textile company. Nobody in this world would be like, oh, Berkshire Hathaway, what a beautiful name. But Warren Buffett pays himself $72 million a year and has $80 billion net worth. Ty, how do you feel about drop shipping? A lot of you, I mean, I still have a drop shipping course. It can still work. A guy on the street today came up to me in New York when I was down here walking uh, home and he's just like, I'm doing drop shipping, but drop shipping is getting saturated by the hour. There is some ways to do it, but I, I'm not going to talk about that now. Today's not, you know. Ty seems like he's reading from here. Yes, I am reading from Instagram, but now I switched to YouTube. Somebody said Mike, the word Microsoft reminds me of flaccid Chinese. Okay. I'm 15 years old and my parents separated four months ago and everything is getting worse. My dad hasn't paid three months of water bill. Carla, here's the thing, Carla. Every single one of you, learn to be financially independent because people will let you down. So you've got to learn how to make money on your own. You can partner with other people. I still do that. But you still have to know how to do stuff yourself. You still have to be self-sufficient and you also have to be a learning machine. So those of you under tremendous pressure right now, Okay, use that as motivation to get out of bed a little bit earlier and work a little harder. So it's not all bad when things go bad. Every great thing in my life was preceded by something crappy, unfortunately. You know? Ty, big fan of your work. I purchased your SMMA program a month ago. What's your advice to making money with no experience? Content marketing, start to build a following. I started with 10 people on my email list, 10. And now I have millions, but it's guaranteed. It's almost like a pension for the rest of my life. As long as people still use email, people aren't going to use email forever. So, but I, I predict for the next five to 10 years, people will use email. And I'm going to tell you why, because my grandma uses email and she's 101. My mom uses email. She's what in her sixties. She's not changing. She's not changing. So old people aren't going to change. So you use social media marketing, whatever platform's hot every year, new ones come out, TikTok, Snapchat, blah, blah, blah. Who knows what it'll be in two years, right? And you advertise there to younger people and you use your email marketing for older people. People over 50 are going to use email for sure for another decade because old dogs don't learn new tricks. I hate email personally. I don't read email at all, but my grandma is not going to change at 101. She's not suddenly going to go, you know. Okay. I'm going to get off here. So, oh, video ads. So let's talk about the diagram video. What do you need in good video marketing? The most important thing you need, I'm just going to put some things. You need action. Try to move around. You need props. People forget about props. You need props. People don't want to just stare at your face. Subtitles are good so that people who have their audio off, about half the people watching video online, like they're in a crowded place, so they, they want to be able to read what you're saying. So subtitles are important. Another thing is a strong hook. You need a pattern interrupt. 
So a pattern interrupt, a perfect example of it, is when you guys got on here, I had Kate on here. So you were expecting to just see me. And then all of a sudden you saw Kate, and you're like, wait a second, what, what's going on? Oh, that? You know? And now I've got 2,000 people. I've got 1,300 people watching on YouTube. I don't know how many on Instagram. There's, where the heck's, in, oh, 500 there. So we're at 1,800. I'm about 2,000 people watching. Part of that is pattern interrupt. Ty, what's a unique way to market candles? Hughes asked. Okay, Hugh, let's go to video marketing here. We need, if you want to sell candles, okay, candles. Remember, you only got to make 11 bucks an hour. 24-7, 365, and you made 100 grand. That's definitely, I have a friend who has a candle business, believe it or not, who does, uh, I don't know, he made like 3 million bucks selling candles, maybe more. That was like three years ago. Who knows what he's at now? So you need action. How can we, I don't know, throw a candle at somebody in the video. Juggle candles while they're on fire, which candles kind of are, but set them extra on fire. Just don't set yourself on fire. Although that would be a great pattern interrupt, but you may not live to make the hundred grand minus hospital bills, you'll make $3. So props, put subtitles on it. Juggling, I swear, juggling candles, as stupid as that sounds, would put money in the bank account. So, yeah. Um, the subtitle tip is gold, no problem. For those of you getting value from this talk, you should definitely be in the next four months of my cash flow training. I'm unlocking everything. Because you gotta remember, I didn't teach everything I know in my SMMA course because that's just about how to start a social media marketing agency. I wanna show you how to make a perpetual, as perpetual as possible, nothing lasts forever, but an automated money machine. Now, you will have to do it. It's not 100% passive. Anybody who tells you, nothing's 100% passive income, but it can be more passive than what most people live. If you work, I was just at Starbucks and I was looking in at Starbucks and I was just thinking, because there's somebody there who's older. I can understand working at Starbucks when you're like 20 to pay your way through college or whatever. But this was a person who looked like they were like a Starbucks lifer. And I was just going, that, I don't know how people, I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm not looking down on anybody. I just feel like I'd rather be homeless than go in every day and be like writing people's name on a cup. Look, coffee's, I kind of like coffee, but I don't like anything I got to smell eight hours a day and they got that Starbucks music and I was just like, people come in, they're like rude. You get to get Rick, Frank, <laughs> Kate. That's not, there's nothing passive about that job. Not 1% of that job is passive. You do not get paid if you're not there. Well, with video marketing, content marketing, once you record a video once, the thing can make you money for years. I have videos still running that I recorded in 2015 that made me money today. I promise you. Always. They're like random ones. I'm not even boosting them anymore. They're just there. And I'll see a random sale come in and I'm just like, I actually recently, I, I saw, started seeing sales from a video that I did in 2013. It was just me reviewing a book. So, sky's the limit guys, you could be making money from one good piece of content for a long time. Starbucks is overpriced coffee, Jonathan Rabo says. Okay, what else? I've been neglecting Facebook and Twitter. Damn, Facebook is still with me and Kate. Tom and artist, what's a good business for me to make a lot of money? You can make money in art. But you have to be a content marketer. Just like comedians. I know some comedians, I've been telling them for five years, post your funniest stuff on Instagram. No, I don't want to do that like the trade. I don't want people, then they won't buy my DVD or they won't watch my Netflix special. I'm like, bullshit. They're more likely to watch it if you give them a free sample. No, 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 I know. I, I literally have two sets of comedian friends. One didn't listen to my advice. There's an, other people, now I don't know, I can't take the credit. I don't know if they listened to me or they figured it out for multiple people, but 
there's all kinds of comedians like Sebastian. I don't know him personally, but I've been watching his progression. He used to just post random stuff on his Instagram. Then he started posting, lo and behold, his funniest jokes on stage. He would cut little 30 second clips. Man, the guy's blown up. He's hosting the music. He's hosting the VMAs or some music award coming out. He just played Madison Square Garden. I watched that. He was not that big because I've been going to comedy clubs in Hollywood since like 2008. I've seen all these comedians rise and fall or never. I, and some of the funniest comedians. I know comedians. I'm not going to say their name. I know a guy is the funniest guy in the world. Never been able to get his name out there. And I look at his Instagram. Not once in the last 30 days has he posted one set of him doing a joke. I'm going, what the fuck? Do I really? Is the world at a place where I have to be like, if you're a comedian, post comedy. And, but you know how many artists I've told? Musicians, people I meet. Yo, Tom, I'm a musician. I'm a rapper. Oh, let me see your Instagram. Show me you rapping. Oh, no, no. I'm waiting until I finish my best. Oh, no, I'm going to get signed by... What? Are you in 1994? Put your best song for free on social media. In fact, Justin Bieber, he started with a YouTube video, I think, of him playing the guitar. It all starts there. Get your content marketing. For those of you who are artists, this person asked me about art. Where's your art? And are you presenting it in a boring way, just like your pictures, or are you doing something crazy? Make a piece of art and then blow it up with a stick of dynamite. That's a pattern interrupt, right? Be different, be on the cutting edge. Yeah, Usher saw Justin Bieber on a YouTube commercial. <clears throat> Todd, that is really true. You're killing it. I have an online course and a YouTube channel. Should I give my best content away for free? That's in my course. I've been afraid. Listen, you give away, you don't have to give away all your best stuff, but you best believe you have to give away good stuff. Like I recorded a video not too long ago. I was in San Diego visiting my grandma. I recorded like the most, one of my best videos ever. It was me talking about how to sell, how to close deals. And it was just like, I wasn't selling people anything. It was just free content on closing deals. And I recorded and people go, I get people going, that's the best advice I've ever heard. Guess what? I'm building a loyal following. Teach, tailor, take control. You have to establish yourself as somewhat of an authority in sub, some subject, okay? Um, someone said, Scooter Braun discovered Bieber. Well, Scooter Braun is one of those people, but it was a, it was a group of people. I think Usher was one of them too. And Akon was back then and they were all, I, I don't know the full story, but you get my drift. The point was not who discovered Justin Bieber. How did they discover Justin Bieber? On social media. Get your stuff out there. If you're shy, who cares? Stop, don't be such a, I would, I'm not gonna supposed to say this on camera. Don't be a wussy. Isn't that, you're allowed to say that. I was gonna say something else, but so many people in this modern world are just wussy. They're like, uh, what if I don't look good? I'm like, well, people won't watch it if you look bad. You know what I learned? I used to do, I used to run all these nightclubs and own a nightclub business. We had like four nightclubs. Red Room, George's Garage, Parazod, um, Verde, and Spice Street, five. Okay, in, in Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area. And one thing I learned when I first started out, nobody went to my nightclubs because nobody knew who I was. So my first one I did, there was like 10 people there. It was kind of a dud. And it was like a big club. It looks bad when just like, but some, my mentor back then, this guy named Giorgio Batoxius, who, who was a millionaire guy who owned these restaurants, he came up to me and said, let me tell you the good news. The party, your, your club sucked tonight, but nobody was here to see that it sucked. Only 14 people saw it. The worst thing that can happen to you in a nightclub business, and this happened to my friend Greg, he had 2,000 people at his club and somebody got killed. That's bad because then 2,000 people go, that club is freaking crazy. So for all of you that go, what if I post the video and I don't, I'm not that good. Well, then I go, nobody's going to watch it. 
And what happens if it's good? A lot of people watch it. Now, I guess if you really messed up or something like that and it went viral to make fun of you, eh, that doesn't happen. That, let me tell you this. If you get a viral video, even if it's making fun of you, it's good. What do they say? All press is good press. I don't know if that's 100% true. If you were like exposed for being a serial killer, that's not good press. Most press is good press. Okay, even if it's making fun of you. I've had people make fun of me. You know how many parody videos of here in my garage? I'll tell you this, my friend, I got a friend make, made 100 million bucks in the last five years. He came to me when my, here in my garage and there was all these parodies and he called me, he goes, you are a genius. I didn't even plan the parodies. He goes, how did you pull this off? I go, what do you mean? He goes, parodies are the greatest way to get free viral word of mouth. That's why celebrities go to roasts. Remember they did the roast of Justin Bieber? They were cruel. Shaq, they were, they were cruel, but it spread the name of Justin Bieber more. Trump. Trump. People roast Trump. They get him elected. The Kardashians. People make fun of them, but guess who's laughing all the way to the bank? Kendall Jenner. Kylie. Kendall Jenner is the highest paid supermodel in the world. She wasn't even a model before. Now she's the highest paid. Kylie Jenner is the youngest female self-made billionaire in history. Okay, or the first, I don't know if anybody's, I don't think there's ever been a 21 year old self-made. And I know, I know people say, oh, they didn't make, she's not self-made, her family. Okay, whatever, forget semantics. She still got a lot of money. And what's wrong with parroting you? Don't be a wussy, add a P, and you'll know what I really wanted to call you. But I don't want my, my channel being flagged. Okay, there are no Bad viral videos. You know who turned around bad viral video? Bad Baby. You know the, you know who I'm talking about? Who's on Dr. Phil? Oh, yeah, yeah. Who was like, uh, uh, catch me outside, outside. how about that? (laughs) Dude, she turned everybody hating her and mad at her into a freaking empire. Her and her mom came to my house two years ago. Her mom, her, and her bodyguard. She got a huge white bodyguard, like, Rome, sometimes you see with me, this guy's almost as big as Rome. Not quite as big as Rome, but he's a big dude. They, they rolled up to my house. We shot a funny video with her. And uh, she's a smart girl, by the way. I'll tell you that. Now she got 16 million followers on Instagram. She has a rap career. For sure she's making seven figures, maybe more, a year. She flipped it because she, I'll tell you one thing about Danielle. She has courage. It takes a lot of, even if you disagree, people said she was disrespectful on Dr. Phil, it takes a lot of courage at a 14 year old to have all these adults and be like, basically F you. I'm not approving of it. I'm not disapproving of it. I'm neutral. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, for all of you afraid of not doing it right, she didn't start out perfectly, but she flipped it into something very powerful. Very powerful. So I hope that you guys uh, build something very powerful. Ty, what do I think about Facebook's cryptocurrency? Um, yeah, I, I, we'll see. A lot, of, a lot of crypto people don't like the Libra, you know, whole platform, but we'll see. Uh, somebody just wrote, catch me outside. How do you get over the fear of cold calling? Just call people. Expect people to get mad at you. Learn to laugh when people get mad at you. That's the greatest thing you can ever learn. Learn to laugh when people don't like you. You don't necessarily have to laugh to their face, but when you, people take themselves too seriously. You're not gonna be a good content marketer. Keep your eye on the goal. The goal is to make a hundred grand or a million dollars. So who cares? If people laugh at me, I'm like, Zong, I'll tell you the only thing that pissed me off is somebody actually affects my bank account. Then I'll get mad. That's the, reserve your anger and your fear for somebody actually affecting you. Actually affecting you, okay? Um, how do you make money without having money? That's what I'm talking about. First rule, you gotta pay attention to what I'm saying. Ty, messenger marketing. So you can do messenger marketing. That's another form. You got to watch. Facebook can boot you off. 
that is an issue. So you got to be careful with that with Facebook. Um, they have a lot of compliance stuff around it. So be careful. Messenger bots can get you in trouble. I think I'm going to go. I got to do some other stuff. So for those of you watching, I gave you seven tips, the diagram, content marketing, some stuff on video. Catalog your daily journal, teach Taylor, take control. Email marketing, build the list. I started with 10, went to 100, went to 100,000, went to a million. It's guaranteed income. There's 2 billion websites so you can't just build a website, you have to have to know how to drive traffic. Best way is to find a new platform or a new angle. I talked about TikTok, stuff like that. Um, build a business 24 seven, a web-based business. Never gets tired. Reverse engineer, you don't need to make 100 grand or a million. To make 100 grand, you just make 11 bucks an hour. That's doable, that's very doable. Um, where did I put my? six days left thing. Did I rip that off? Disappearing act here. Is that the first one? All right, well, oh, here. It's the next one. Ta-da! I did what I just told you. Teach, tailor, take control. For those of you who want to be in my most advanced system, I got people, I have to write checks Thursday, which happens to be a holiday, so I'm gonna do it Friday. I'm writing my first commission checks to people. There's a, people made 1,100 bucks this week. There's people making 50 bucks this week, 100 bucks, 200, 500 bucks, lots of people that got in the program. It's only been open for a week, by the way. So learn, partner, build a following, and you'll be set literally you can set yourself up for financial security for a decade. That's the crazy thing. So tylopez.com slash partner live, four month training, and more importantly, I give you a system that you can actually start generating money. I'll be, I'm paying, because I already spend millions of dollars on advertising. I'll just split that same money I was gonna spend there. If you do content marketing and promote my stuff, I'll pay you that money. So, yep. Ty, cash flow program versus SMMA, they're different. The cash flow program is the best thing I've ever put out. That's all I can tell you. So, do any of your business in the partner program sell internationally? Yeah, one of the top people making money is not in the US. I think he's in India or, there's one guy in Mongolia. That's the beautiful thing. If you don't live in America, use the internet to sell into America. You don't need any visa. Donald Trump won't stop you. You can't get deported, nothing. Nobody cares. People in America will buy from anybody as long as it's something they want. So you're gonna be selling my stuff that people want. So you could be sitting, I'll tell you this, if I lived out a great way, for some of you who are stressed about money, go do what Tim Ferriss said in the four hour work week. Leave the United States, go live in Argentina, go live in Thailand, go live in Brazil, go live in Romania. I have a friend in Romania, he makes 100 grand a month, okay, with an online business, all to Americans. He, he does email marketing, email drops, solo ads, all this stuff. This is crazy. He lives in Romania, in Bucharest. I went to visit him in 2000, I think 12. Let me tell you something. Do you know what life this guy has making 100, that's a month, 100 Gs a month. Forget it, he can't even spend all his money. He's like, there's nothing I can do with 100 grand in Romania. Like, he lives in this big penthouse. I said, how much is this place? He's like, it's like four grand. Four grand. And the dude has like, he has a, he didn't have a super fancy car, but you don't want a super fancy car. The roads are kind of rough. He had like a nice Audi R8 or something like that. Um, and he does whatever he wants. He has a little office. He says his employees, he pays them a good wage, which is like 500 bucks a month. He has 10 people or 20 people working for him. He does all content marketing. He does it in like the survival space. Like, you know what preppers are, people who want, to store up food for nuclear holocaust. That's his target market. He has an email, and they, like this dude make, I saw it, because I was gonna partner with him on something. I saw, he was making at least eight to $10,000 um, on a good day. 
is making three to eight thousand dollars a day profit. So you can live anywhere in the world. That's if I could start over for sure. Now I got a lot of roots in the US. My grandma's here. I got a lot of employees here. I will go live outside the US. I'd go live in Thailand. Thailand my, and Argentina is a cool place. In Argentina, you do not need more than like eight grand a month to live like a baller. In fact, if you spend any more money, you'll get robbed. You don't want to look too rich. Brazil. So. Uh, remember the quote for Warren Buffett, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Ponder on that. Okay. I'm going to ponder zen-like. Online is getting competitive. Too many advertising agencies are really still viable. Yes, but that's why I'm giving you the cash flow thing. I'm going to show you how to sell directly without even being an agency. So, And I'm going to show you guys how to part, get businesses to split profits with you. I didn't teach that in SMMA. I taught you how to do a flat fee. But Thai should go to Thailand. Very original. <laughs> anyway, tylopez.com slash partner live. I extended it. You got another six days. Jump in the program. I am out. Talk to you soon. Two of you, we got a hundred bucks. We'll be sending out ASAP. You want to say bye, Kate? Some people are asking for you. She, Kate's asleep on the couch. <laughs> you wanna, wait, you need my microphone? Yeah. Oh, is it delayed? No, it's delayed. You need this one. <laughs> bye, guys. <laughs> Kate, Kate's shy. She was very nervous to be on this live call. Kate, tell them something about um, what you have learned with, about content marketing. Oh my gosh, okay. Um, well, from watching you. No, no, from not even from me, just from what oh, you learned. She's been studying on her own. Yes, I have. Um, just be authentic and just be yourself. And myself, I'm shy, but I actually started YouTube myself even though I am shy <laughs> but you just have to like put yourself out there and it's not so bad once you start doing it yeah it's not that bad you shy I mean people? I honestly had a lot of haters in the beginning but really yeah <laughs> well because I was featured on this channel and yeah it was misinterpreted whatever but um... <laughs> <laughs> all press is good press <laughs> yeah. for the most part but yeah there you go you got it from two different people not just for me. Oh Good luck out there. She's beautiful. Let the beauty talk. All right, Isaac. Thank you. Talk to you later.